name is Josh Krabs from Driftblood and Rideville Fire. Today we'll be going over the main parts of the steel 362 chainsaw and the chain itself. We'll start off with the chain itself. Move closer so you can see the parts. The very bottom, you have the drive links. These are what sit inside the bar. They're constantly oiled as they move along throughout the bar. Just above, holding the chain together, are the tie straps and the tie links. These holes here are the rivets and they're inside the rip holes. The cutting part itself is called the cutter. Across from the cutter, you have your depth gauge. This needs to be filed down along with the cutter every time. The space between the two is called the gullet. And those are the main components of the chain itself. Moving back towards the chainsaw, you have your bar. At the end of the bar is the nose. You see these rivets here. It's just to show that the uh, nose of the bar can be replaced since it wears down faster than the rest of the bar. At the end of the bar is your uh, sprocket for your bar. This is what the chain turns on. The drive links sit inside the sprocket. There's one at the end and there's one inside here as well. This part that I shaded here is called the kickback zone of the bar. Uh, kickback happens when the depth gauge is no longer protecting the cutter. The cutter is exposed. The cutter catches a piece of wood and throws the bar back towards the user. In this case, the uh, chain break hopefully is employed. Kickback can happen other ways as well, being pinched by the wood or striking an object, but that's the most common way. Moving back towards the power head, we have our dogs or bumper spikes. These here. Those are for creating a pivot point for the user when they're inside the wood. It takes some of the weight off of the user and creates a straighter cut as well. You have your muffler, your spark screen arrestor inside. You have your front handle guard or your chain brake, most commonly referred to as your chain brake. But the actual chain brake is inside, connected down here, this front handle guard which is engaged with the chain brake. When you have your front handle, a full wrap option is available. Um, if you have the full wrap, it just gives you the option from cutting on the other side of the tree if you want to. Maybe to hold it over here instead of having to lean down. You have your bar nuts and your chain tensioner. Bar nuts need to be released some before you tension the chain. This line here, running across all the way over, is your gunning site. This is what the chainsaw user uses as a aiming site for when they're falling the tree when you're in that first initial face cut. This is where when you're coming down, you get to where you want, use that line as a reference to make sure the tree's gonna fall where you want it to go. Assuming all your other cuts are correct as well. You have your starter assembly inside here under the logo connected to your pull cord and your handle. Oil reservoir, fuel reservoir. They're both quarter turns. Uh, oil reservoir is always going to be closest to the front of the power head just so that it can oil the bar in the chain since it's constantly oiled. When opening, when opening the fuel cap on a flyer ground, if it's been operating vent in the roof or if you're operating it for wildland purposes in its high heat area, don't do the full quarter turn right away, do an eighth of a turn, let those gas vapors release. Uh, several cases, it's very common in wildland fire. For a firefighter to open it all the way quickly, open it, and what's called fuel geysering occurs. So when the vapors built up, release that hot gasoline up towards the user and uh, burn injuries. So just remember, eighth of a turn, let those vapors release, you'll hear it before you do the full quarter turn and also point it away from you and others. Towards the back, you have your shroud, which is the whole orange part, and your shroud locks. There's usually three or four per chainsaw. On the back is your master control level lever. You usually have full choke, half choke, idle and off. On these newer models, you just have what's called start position and then idle and off. Throttle control lever down here and your throttle 
control walk that needs to be compressed to operate the lower. Those are just the main parts. Some more components, especially when you get into maintenance of the saw, but just as far as the outside, those are the main ones.